We shouldn't think that just because they're zebrafish or just because they're fish, they're in some way less than any mammalian species. In my mind, they certainly aren't. I think it's important to study the zebrafish brain because, because we, we, only through studying the zebrafish brain will we really understand how the human brain is wired up. But I think it's, it's, it's also important just because it's beautiful. If we get a new line and it's really beautiful, I can still find the image is very exciting. Um, and we all have like pet favourite brain areas, so if we get a new line that's lighting up our favourite anatomical region, we can get quite excited. The zebrafish are uh, becoming an extremely popular biomedical research model. Originally they come from northeast India, Bangladesh, that, that kind of area. So people have studied them in the wild, but they've been in captivity for a such a long time now that I think there will be significant differences between a laboratory fish and a wild fish. I can't recreate the floodplains of Bangladesh. We cannot do that here. Um, but there are always things that we can do and there are always things we should be doing to try and make, to make their lives as comfortable as possible. Um, I work on zebrafish um, brain development. So I'm working on a resource called zebrafishbrain.org and it, uh, the, the idea of it really is to um, present zebrafish brain anatomy through the web. To, so to be able to provide a resource for the community, the zebrafish community, to be able to access the very latest information on uh, zebrafish brain anatomy. We uh, make a, a, a transgene, a, a construct that, that will insert itself into the genome and we inject that at an early stage and then produce a line of, of zebrafish which is a, you know, a genetically stable population. And then we can look at the embryos that are produced by those adults and examine them with a confocal microscope. So a confocal microscope is a, a, a machine which uses a kind of a clever combination of pinholes and lasers and laser scanning techniques to be able to optically slice through something. So in this case it would be a zebrafish embryo, usually a fixed one, so one that's been preserved. But sometimes live ones, people do look at live zebrafish embryos. And you can slice it through using optically, so using a laser effectively, so you can build up slices which you can then build up into a three-dimensional view of, a, of an organism, so you can rotate it around, etc. So, so you pineal is here, you've got different bits of um, neuropil in the pineal, which are connecting up, and then you, as you go deeper, you can see the herbanulite. So, like it's one argument to say that it's important for human disease and to understand you know, brain cells and how they connect up, which it definitely is, and it will also help in that regard. It's not going to directly be applied to some disease, but it will certainly help to understand sort of neuroscience generally and how brain cells behave and connect and such like. But I think it's an equally valid argument to say, okay, well look, let's just look at it and understand it and, and appreciate it. And it's in the same sense, it's like being a naturalist. It's like going to, to describe different species in the world. It's just the same thing. It's just it's focused on one species, on some particular part of the species. And I think it's a, an equally valid approach and, 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 and philosophically an equally valid um, thing to do. I think it's, it's funny to think that you've fallen into different career paths and it almost seems kind of random that I ended up doing zebrafish but then you kind of get sucked in and I can't really imagine wanting to work on um, 
and other organisms, although occasionally tempted by worms because they're a bit simpler. But, <laughs> but um...